uh, yes, I'm aware of that. Uh, it's not also only in Biak, but I think it's all over West Papua. Uh, currently, Indonesian uh, military and police uh, uh, doing up arrest on all Papuan activists and political leaders uh, because um, uh, most of you would have heard by now that uh, um, the special autonomy law that was introduced was Papua in 2001, which which will end in 2021. Well, it is hand now, it is ended. So during the special, special uh, duration of the special autonomy law, which is about 20 years, that was introduced in 2001 till now, uh, it's the special autonomy law has not achieved its results. So the Papuans are now gathering and demanding that Indonesian government uh, needs to come and sit down with them and listen to the wishes, what they really want. Not for Jakarta to to revise the special autonomy law and uh, force the Papuans to accept what they want. So the rallies that are going now across West Papua is basically to refuse the revised special autonomy law, which Indonesia's uh, government is currently trying to introduce in West Papua. And I think this is against the international law. Uh, 20 year period, as uh, after the 20 years, year period, then you need to offer another alternative, which is referendum. So I think this is uh, not happening in West Papua. So as a result, we're having uh, uh, rallies across West Papua and activists are being arrested. And some, uh, also one that I know of uh, was uh, uh, Naftali, uh, Naftali uh, Tapagao. He's one of the uh, ladies from KNPB who was uh, kidnapped. And uh, and then taken away, and up until now, uh, we've heard that he's been charged for treason, and these are, you know, these are drummed up charges, which, uh, of course, uh, lacks all the evidence and then so forth. Certainly. Now, obviously, people in uh, West Papua are calling for uh, for people to reject the special autonomy, and they're also demanding for a, a new referendum for West Papua. For for those of our, our listeners that aren't familiar with the history of West Papua, can you just go into some detail as to why a, a new referendum is important and why the majority of uh, you know West Papuans r- reject, uh, I guess, the the history of the, the previous referendum and these claims by, you know, I guess the Indonesian state that Papuans have chosen to remain a part of Indonesia? Yeah. All right. If you look at the history, uh, in 1961, uh, on 1st December 1961, uh, Dutch government um, uh, were um, prepared West Papua for independence. So they, uh, it's every year we used to celebrate 1st December. It's more of an embryo of the state of West Papua. So there was an embryo, embryo of the state of West Papua, which includes, the, uh, uh, which was uh, proclaimed on the day. So the constitution, the flag, the coat of arm, and all the attributes of the nation of West Papua was proclaimed on the day. So 10 years later, uh, the Dutch was supposed to proclaim the nation of West Papua, which they failed to do that. So on 1st July, uh, 10 years later, on 1st July 1971, uh, our leaders uh, took the op- op- only opportunity available to them at that time and proclaimed the nation of West Papua. So West Papua is more of a, a, a well, they proclaimed the, the nation of West Papua. So all the attributes and the flag uh, during the, the time of Dutch was more territorial flag becomes a national flag and a symbol uh, and all the attributes. So, the, the, you know, there was a dispute between Indonesia and Dutch about West Papua. Indonesia claims that whatever that belongs to uh, Dutch must go back to, it belongs to Indonesia, but Dutch said, no, uh, Papuans are unique in, uh, in many ways. In, in ethnicity, they're, they're connected to the people of the Pacific and more closer to the Melanesian uh, cousin Papua New Guinea. So they were preparing Papua, uh, West Papua for independence. So the dispute between the Dutch and Indonesia was settled by America, who became the middleman to settle, settle the dispute. So uh, in 1962, we have this, uh, this so-called New York Agreement uh, to settle the dispute. And uh, in the New York Agreement, it talks about Again, the New York Agreement never involved the people of West Papua. It's more between the colonizers themselves. So in the New York Agreement, it talks about the referendum where you need to involve 
all the indigenous people of West Papua to participate. Okay. And then in 1969, when the referendum was held, it never, it never followed uh, what was uh, uh, discussed on the original New York Agreement, where it says that the indigenous Papuans must uh, participate in the referendum. What Indonesia did was uh, they did it according to their own system called Mushuara. So there was sort of a discussion between all the elders. So what they did was um, they selected uh, uh, 1,025 uh, Papuan elders and forced them at gunpoint uh, uh, to say yes, to become part of Indonesia. When in fact, during that time, we had about, uh, in West Papua, we've got about 800,000 plus, almost a million people that were supposed to participate in the referendum. They, they, they were not given an opportunity. So um, right now we, uh, you know, we're, we're not really demanding more about referendum, but we want Indonesia to recognize that West Papua was already a state, a nation of its own. And Indonesia must respect our rights as an indigenous people, as a people uh, 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 that uh, we are an independent state already. We are, we are a nation of our own. So Indonesia must recognize our, our rights uh, to, to self-determination or something, yeah. Now, ever since then, of course, there's been, uh, you know, full on state repression from the Indonesian government on West Papuans. And there's been many, many activists and leaders and others who have been kidnapped or, or murdered. And this is just a part of, I guess, the, the sad history of the, the struggle of uh, West Papuan self-determination. However, it's been quite inspiring, I think, in, in recent years for many of us that follow this issue. And I'm sure for uh, many West Papuan activists here in Australia to see, I guess, a, a heightened level of, of activism activism and struggle, particularly among students in, in West Papua. I know recently with uh, the big demonstrations in Indonesia against the omnibus law, there were uh, a lot more, uh, I guess, solidarity actions from the Indonesian left with West Papuans, what was quite remarkable to see uh, happening there. What is what is your feeling, I guess, on the, on the current state of the, the movement for uh, self-determination and independence in West Papua? Are you seeing this heightened level of activity? There has been this talk of another a general strike. What, what, what are your feelings in terms of the, the current level of activism in West Papua? Do you think that the struggle is building some momentum? Yeah, I think at the moment uh, with the special autonomy ending, we just end that. Uh, the momentum has uh, built up now and uh, this uh, um, I would like I would also would, would like to uh, appreciate and thank all the Indonesians uh, that are supporting us in our struggle. It's not only with Papuans who are fighting uh, this fight. We also have uh, Indonesian uh, front, Indonesian people from West Papua. These are Indonesians uh, elite. These are Indonesians who have, well, have now realized that what the government did in the past was wrong, and they realized that Indonesian government, their own government, has manipulated the history and how they uh, invaded and annexed West Papua. So they, they, these are Indonesians who are now standing up and fighting the cause, uh, fighting uh, on our behalf. So we, we as West Papuans, we, we appreciate that. And uh, I can see there is a sense of uh, awareness now in West Papua that people are now based, uh, standing up and fighting for the rights. And it's not happening only in, in the cities, but in the rural areas, people are now rising and standing up and um, uh, calling on Indonesian government to respect their rights. And also, you know, the 20 years of uh, special autonomy, uh, people have basically uh, uh, either realized that it has not uh, benefited them. What we have seen throughout West Papua, and it's from my observation as well, we have seen more influx in, in, of Indonesian military into West Papua. So how comes when you have a special autonomy law and then you are sending more military into West Papua? So this is more, uh, more like a death trap to the West Papuan pe people. We see special autonomy more like a death trap. So um, what the people now in West Papua uh, want is... Uh, they want uh, the special autonomy. You know, they want, well, they've actually rejected it. So they want the Indonesian government to sit down with the leaders and uh, sit with us and discuss and find out what we actually what we want. So what all people want now is referendum. They want they want something that uh, they feel that uh, you know. The special autonomy has law has failed. So another option now is you have to give the Papuans uh, what what they feel is best for them. 
So if the option, the option of the referendum is best, then I think Indonesian government uh, should accept it, yeah. But I can, uh, as going, going back to your question, yeah, there is a sense of uh, growing awareness now with Papua. I think the Papuans are now realized uh, their right to self-determination and under international law, we, we West Papuans uh, do have that right because Indonesian government violated that uh, 1969 referendum where it never followed the UN system. Uh, and this is where Indonesia must realize now uh, it needs to give back the Papuans the opportunity maybe to discuss, to decide what they want. And if, it, if there needs to be in the referendum, then so be it, yeah. Finally, Lewis, for our listeners that would like to support the uh, self-determination struggles of West Papuans, what do you suggest they do? I guess it's difficult being uh, you know, somewhat removed from, from the area, but obviously there are solidarity groups here in Perth and also where you are over in Melbourne. What, what is the best way people can show their solidarity and their support? Uh, we have, uh, well... Normally, the messages that are coming out from coming out from West Papua is mainly through Facebook, and and yeah, Facebook and through um, internet or you know through other mainstream news, I guess. But mostly, most of the information uh, from West Papua is through Facebook that we are, we are sharing out to public. And I guess one of the ways you can share the the stories of West Papua just to show it. Uh, put it on your chain, on your wall, and maybe tag your friends and let them aware, let them know about what's happening with with Papua. We need more people to be uh, um, uh, to be involved. You know, you you cannot go to West Papua and you know be part of us and, and lobby or support or advocate. But maybe by sharing our story through social media or Facebook or Twitter will be really good because we really need to expose uh, this evil regime that has no uh, no no place in humanity, you know. Uh, uh, human rights is about humanity. We need to stand up for everyone. We need to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. So uh, for us, uh, um, for us living in Australia, and one of the ways that we can do is um, based, if you Google West, uh, Google West Papua, or if you go to Facebook, you just type West Papua, you might have some links which uh, will give you um, groups that you can be part of and that you can share those uh, stories onto your wall, take your friends and let them know about what's happening with Papua. And also, one of the things that you can do also is write to your local MPs uh, in, in where you are and let them know about uh, the suffering of the West Papuan people and let uh, they have no. Uh, um, ask them if they can speak that uh, speak on behalf of the West Papuan people in in the Australian Parliament and let the government know. And I think that's one of the two ways that uh, we can do.